Kenny? Master King? Here. Master Barger? Here. Master Hughes? Here. Master Combs? Here. Judge Clark? Here. I uh, hope you all have had a chance to look at the minutes of the last meeting. If there are no changes, no discussion, motion would be in order to approve those as submitted. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, Treasurer's report, Glenna. I think we've got that for the uh, fourth Tuesday. You have your regular financial report. And if you will look, as of 228, 2014, we had $7,563,790.59 total fund balance. As of 331, 2014, we have $6,955,298.37. Uh, right now, we are exactly, uh, as of this report, is 331, 2014, which is 75% way through the year. Our general fund revenues are at 88.5%. Our expenditures are at 56.4%. Our road revenues are at 102.8%. Our expenditures are at 83.7%. Our jail fund revenues are at 80.9%, and our expenditures are at 774 Our CSEP fund revenues are at 23.5%, and our expenditures are at 22.1%. And our 911 fund revenues are at 75.9%, and our expenditures are at 685 um, also, is there any questions about this report? Like I said, you all can call me anytime. This is also available to the public if anybody would like a copy. They can just call my office and we'll get you a copy or see the judge's office. Um, also, I put in your all's drop box. This is just a rough draft uh, of the budget, so you all can be looking over that. If you have any questions, you can call me. Um, we'll be having first reading later on. So this is just a rough draft. We finished that uh, last week, got everything done, and just wanted to give you all plenty of chance to look at it. Uh, the first reading has to be done by the 1st of May, June. So uh, we've got plenty of time for you all to look at it. And as always, uh, we can schedule meetings at any time. Come in, just mark anything you've got a question about, anything you're not sure about, uh, anything you don't like about it. And uh, come in, and we'll sit down and talk about it, and we'll work things out. But it's, uh, it's another good budget. Uh, looks like uh, this year's going to be another balanced budget with uh, maybe a little bit more surplus than we had last year. So uh, things look really good right now. But uh, please, we've given plenty of time a month to look over that, and we're more than willing to schedule meetings at any time to go over any particular item, any line item, or any department. There's no new line items in this budget, are there? We had a couple of the um, social things, okay. a couple of small ones, like $1,000, $3,000, that's it. And, and one thing, Larry, I'll talk to you all about is, and I think everybody here is, is on board, is we're going on putting money for these emergency services when everything's gone. We're going on and budgeting like the city is to make sure that we've got some kind of seed money to prepare ourselves for when CSEP goes away. So you'll see that in there, and we'll talk about that, too. That's a good idea, Judge. <clears throat> OK, any other questions for Glenna? Doing a good job. Not thanks, Glenna. Uh, we're going into order of business. And first, it's always a pleasure uh, to have representatives from the Richmond Area Arts Council. And Debbie Kidd is here today with us, and Jan Tennell. Uh, Debbie's ex Dr. John Stone, and uh, we always like to get a nice report from them. I know what a wonderful job you all do. And uh, Debbie, if you'd like to take the podium, or if Dr. John Stone, if you'd all like to take the podium uh, and tell us about what's going on. Can we dim the lights? Sure, absolutely. Please. I don't know about dim it, Debbie. We might just, just have to turn them on and off. Turn them off, okay. <laughs> we ain't got the dimmers yet. <laughs> I understand, trust me. Well, I'm really uh, glad that you were talking about the budget because the Richmond Area Arts Council is a nonprofit and we do help all the citizens of Madison County. So we would appreciate being considered as you're working with the budget and we appreciate everything that you all have done for us in the past. Without the support of the community, we would not be able to maintain our 1887 historic building in downtown Richmond. Um, it's not an eyesore, it's a beautiful place and it's a place for the community. 
after the first paragraph uh, comment excuse me in partnership with the community so we're here to enrich the lives of all Madison County residents so what does that do well we make Richmond and Madison County a good place to live work play and retire so we want when people are looking for a place to settle maybe a place to retire a place of uh, great schools with their children they look to Madison County and they look to the arts as part of that so he told me this would work okay there you go this is our vision statement we want to be a model arts organization for the Commonwealth and we want to ensure access to the arts for all ages and as I progress through this PowerPoint I think you'll see that we do try to have arts opportunities at various levels different uh, art forms from birth to a hundred if you need it we want to successfully support partner and collaborate with others committed to the arts and we do have very strong partnerships within our community we're a function with a board of directors I'm the executive director uh, I'm the only full-time employee of the Arts Council <clears throat> Julie Ledford is a finance coordinator working 12 hours a week and Darren McQueen is my administrative assistant who works 28 hours per week so as you look through this just understand that all that we do is with two part-times myself and our board volunteers as well as volunteers within the community and we have a strong volunteer base within our community these are our current board of directors I'll give you a moment to look over those so volunteer opportunities these are some of the ones that we've had um, in the upper left is our members meeting of course you can see some of our volunteers that we've had throughout the year in the bottom right I draw your attention to Nathaniel house um, we they're gonna be having an art exhibit opening up Nathaniel house is a home for citizens in Madison County both adult and children with uh, mental and physical disabilities but they're strong partnerships with us they can do mailings for us and we always supply an art exhibit for them they're very artistic and they're very expressive through their art on Monday evenings and we just had our spring concert last night which was very successful we have the treble clef youth chorus they're gracious enough to allow me to direct this chorus um, many of you know I'm a retired music educator it's open to any student um, and we're expanding the uh, grades from one through nine and we our song uh, concert last night was called songs from the heart we have students who audition and make several all-state courses throughout the year as well on Tuesday nights we have the Madison Singers and these are some pictures from our patriotic concert we've retitled that this year to be the American Musical <coughs> Salute this is a partnership with the Madison Community Band directed by Dr. John Strobe. Uh, we'll be presenting um, a concert May 19th um, with uh, at the First Christian Church uh, Dr. Richard Waters is our director and the patriotic concert will be our next one that will be July 3rd in the EKU ravine and I'm going to be sending letters to all of you because we are going to be asking for some support just to cover expenses we're not trying to make a lot of money but it is a kickoff to our um, holiday season for the July 4th Wednesday nights we have Madison strings um, in the center you see a cello and most of the other st students play strings uh, the violin we have two levels uh, one strings one is for the beginners and then strings two for those with a little bit more experience Monday begins our arts expo this year we're going to be having this at the EKU Center for the Arts lobby uh, simply because of space it has grown to that point and so that I think that's a great thing if you come um, the 29th which is when it will open from 9 to 5 there'll be an awards presentation at 6 I think you'll be amazed at the talent of the students in Madison County this is for kindergarten through 12th grade this is a partnership with Madison County Schools as well as the EKU Center for the Performing Arts our fall gala will be held uh, September 12th um, again at Elmwood these are just some of the pictures from last year's gala uh, we did a little spin-off last year of Downton Abbey so we called it Richmond Downtown Abbey and so I think that most of this is as a staple to the community I think that most of you are aware of this and this is a fundraiser our fall fundraiser for the Arts Council some more pictures from the gala we sponsor art exhibits for local artists throughout the year 
This is a one that we have uh, partially down there now with Jesse Glenn and Brian Wiley. These are two young men who are from Madison County. These are other exhibits that we've had. Mike Park, who works in EKU Sports. Our circuit court clerk, Darlene Snyder. Martha Grice. Um, several local artists have had exhibits down there. This is part of the Nathaniel House art exhibit that will be going up the 1st of May. We also have local uh, consignments for local artists. On the right, the jewelry is made from um, soda cans and the beads are made from magazines. This is Linda Wooten, who's recently moved back. On the left, you have Tater Knob Pottery. We have some barn art from Jesse Arrowwood and uh, several books, uh, Shaker Village books, craft table books. Our Celtic Festival continues to be a very big event. These are some pictures from this year's and the previous year's events. Of course, this is held in March. Our Derby Brunch is upcoming May 3rd, and uh, we're going to have the Willow Branch Wanderers, a bluegrass group, which is a local group. It's at Whitehall State Historic Site. There'll be a tour of the first floor, all, all kinds of activities for the children. They can make their derby hats. Adults can make derby hats. Um, great brunch, just a wonderful time for all. The children can decorate their own horseshoes and make all kinds of little crafts as well. Our after school program is a partnership with, again with Madison County Schools. We offer in three hub schools, Shannon Johnson, Glen Marshall, and White Hall. We give the children a snack at three o'clock and then at 3.30 the classes begin. They're taught until five and parents can pick their children up between five and 5.15. All of the teachers are experts in their field. We offer guitar, we offer piano, all kinds of art class including pottery. We have a hand chimes class, we have movement classes, we have a cooking class, just many things for the children so that they're engaged and safe during the after school hours. Also for adult classes, we have monthly basket classes that are wonderful. We've had photography classes, a gardening class where we have an upcoming gardening tour in June. We've had writing classes, uh, we've had quilt classes, shaker boxes classes. Uh, tomorrow night we have the Kentucky Poet Laureate, Frank X. Walker that will be at the Arts Center beginning at 7.30 for a free poetry reading. So that's, um, that says something for us that we're able to get the Kentucky Poet Laureate. On Monday evenings after the youth chorus, we've been having some dance classes. And I think that some of you may recognize some of these wonderful folks that have been taking the classes. Um, yeah, I think that I think that you do. I think you recognize, and they're great dancers too. They're wonderful dancers. These are some more pictures of our camera class. Our morning, um, tomorrow morning at 9.30, we'll have an art class. This is every Wednesday morning, 9.30 to 11.30. We have a breakfast with Santa. We have Hope's Wings. We partner with them for the uh, domestic violence. We have summer arts um, camps as well. We're going to have The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Charlotte's Web, a poetry class, and I'm looking into a Spanish class as well. We have the art center that we rent. We had a rental there on Saturday. So it's a beautiful place to rent if you want to consider this for a wedding. We have birthday parties. We have showers. Actually, Saturday's event was a funeral. So we have different, you know, different events throughout the year. Our attendance figure from our Ju July 3rd Patriotic Concert partnership with the Madison Community Band, we had 350. We're always hoping to increase our numbers. You can look at the numbers for yourself. So these are all the numbers of people in Madison County, and there are some surrounding counties that come as well. More attendance figures. The picture on the right is from our summer garden tour of last year. We have engaged 127 volunteers in throughout the 2013 year. The only funds that we have besides uh, what we get from the city and the county, private funds and our local businesses, is last year we were able to get a grant of $8,499 from the Kentucky Arts Council. If you look in the bottom left, you can see the jobs, one full-time, two part-time, as I've alluded to earlier. But the tax generated from this 849 is 4067 for the state, 
12,000 for federal and 1,239 for the city. So you can see that not only are we supporting the community, but we're giving back too in our tax base. 20,500 had access to the arts. We served eight counties, 19 schools were served, and almost 10,000 youths were served throughout the year. So the fund leverage from that 8,500 that we received from the state leveraged $105,046. So we want you to know that the Arts Council is there for you. We appreciate everyone, if, whether you attend a program, participate, um, donate, just support by word of mouth. We appreciate everything that everyone does for us. And that's my presentation. If anyone has questions, you can always call down there and talk to us. <coughs> May I have any questions for Debbie? Well, I just want uh, me being from Berea and the Berea Arts Council, <clears throat> I just want to thank you all for the showing that you all make when they have their uh, get together. And it was a huge success, a lot of stuff on display, but mm -hmm. there was a lot of people from your organization there. And I just want to thank you for helping them and supporting them. I really, um, we're good friends. And when we go to the Kentucky Arts Council, you know, for the anything that we do, you know, we're we're just great friends. And Jeanette Rowlett, we've had the Kentucky Guild of Artists and Craftsmen as an art exhibit there, so we realize that you've got that down there, which is a jewel in your crown too. Sure, yeah. sure. But I want to thank you all because you y'all had a big show in there, and that and that helps. And and I'm sure they're going to help you any way they can too. They do. And we have strong partnerships. Many I could go on and on about our partnerships within the community. But without it, like Tater Knob, not only do we have their consignment, they give us their used clay for our after school program. Well that might not seem like much, but that's a that's a huge expense to have clay for a pottery class. So we have a lot of strong partnerships. We appreciate everyone. I don't mean the judge supported it. it Debbie, good. that's an outstanding report. That's probably one of the best I've seen since well, we've been doing good. this. Very excellent. We'll come back again. Seriously. <laughs> very informative. We do appreciate it. We know you're busy and we really Thank appreciate Thank you very much. It. Thank you all for coming in. We appreciate it. <laughs> okay, we've got a couple of uh, bid awards today. Carl, if you want to come up first, is our microwave bids. And I'll let Carl kind of take over on this. You all have this information. Yeah, all, <clears throat> that should have been in your drop boxes. Hopefully this time, uh, Billy Ray, it was right side up for you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We had uh, a lot of help with these bids. Mission Critical was provided to us from FEMA. Uh, they're the technical subject matter experts because I'm not. <clears throat> this particular project has a significant benefit to Estill County and a small benefit to Madison County. What it's going to do is put a microwave ring in Estill County that they don't have currently, which gives you more redundancy. And it's going to take a spur off of our current ring <clears throat> and tie the two rings together. So us and ESTA will be able to back up each other in a 911 capability, dispatch capability, whatever, as well as it will give us both two feeds to the National Weather Service uh, system for things like, you know, tornado warnings, flood warnings, et cetera. So that's the benefit of the system. Um, we had two contractors or two vendors bid it. We know both of them well. They're both top shelf companies. Uh, we had AMK and uh, RCS. Like I said, we've dealt with both of them before. We currently deal in Madison County with both of them on a daily basis. Um, and Fred over in Esto County deals with RCS on a regular basis. So we knew the companies. They're strong companies. They're dependable. They're service oriented. <clears throat> they both submitted two bid packages for the bid. Uh, we quickly got down to the best one of each of them. And those were the two that were evaluated that you have the information on your drop in your drop down boxes for. Uh, one of the items looked like this. It was the little color-coded chart, <clears throat> which was what Mission Critical did to just give us a, uh, a heads up on good, bad, or whatever. And you can see on the bottom of that first page where it's got the prices listed for five-year uh, out-of-pocket expenses associated with these two projects. So you can see that they're, you know, they're four dollars apart on an almost half-million-dollar project over five years. So price became fairly benign. It was looking at more what the product itself was. <clears throat> the second sheet you got looks like this. That was the highs of both people's bids and the lows of both people's bids. So you could have a feel for it. 
So based on all that, when we got done and two conference calls between Estill County, myself, and Mission Critical, uh, the recommendation out of the uh, evaluation was that we would award the contract to AMK for 11 and 18 gigahertz system uh, versus the 4.9 gigahertz system of RCS. Like I said, they're four dollars apart. Both systems would work, but AMK won it based on a couple technical things that um, Mission Critical felt were stronger for the future. So that's where I'm at. I'm, uh, willing to answer questions I'm capable of as long as we don't get into the technical engineering side because I'm not a expert in that stuff so we've dealt with AMK before yeah they're they currently maintain our current 800 system and we've dealt with like I said we've dealt with both of them RCS maintains all of our sirens all 90 of our sirens they they win our contract every two years for that they're the best at dealing with sirens I've ever seen so both companies are great companies but you know, going based on what Mission Critical's engineer said, I'm not an engineer, so. Neither one of them would be a bad thing for Estill County or us, but we're comfortable that we've made the right decision based on two conference calls with all the experts. Did the $4 have a variance in? Four, four, four dollar difference. <laughs> the pricing, like I said, became a moot point when we got done looking at the five year uh, cost of it, and that's what Estill County wanted to know. What is this going to cost me? Not just today, but four years from now, or five years from now. What's the what's the checks going to amount to? And this is what the five year looked like. So that five year cost, that four dollars different, like you've got uh, maintenance cost up here in the color coded sheet. That RSC has five year maintenance cost of fifty nine thousand, and AMK has five year maintenance cost of nineteen thousand. That's reflected in that total. F Correct. Okay. Because because there's pieces of RCS 4.9 bid that were cheaper than pieces in the AMK bid. But when you look at all the pieces together and stretch it over five years, that's the four dollar difference. <clears throat> it looks like the big thing is immunity from other microwave users. The 4.9 gigahertz versus the 11, 18 gigahertz. That's, yeah. That's a big, significant difference. Yeah. Technically, yes, it is. The the uh, 4.9 we have a 4.9 system here as a, as a backup system they're very good for that and and they're quasi licensed but when you get into 11 and 18 gigahertz systems those are fully licensed with fcc coordination frequency coordination and all that that was one of the things that uh mission critical likes so much about the 11 18 solution and then the warranty was a, a pretty good difference too yes yes one year and three years yes like i said both great bids uh Fred and I both had to kind of rely on Mission Critical a lot for the technical side. We we read through them and we had some questions, but we couldn't get into the minutia like Mission Critical could. <clears throat> so, well, you know, and this has been a a big project. So, and I, I'm sure y'all dotted every I and crossed every T. Uh, Did our best at it, Larry. I have confidence that you done that, and if that's who you feel comfortable with, I'm. I'm I'll make the motion. I Larry, let me ask before the motion. I think uh, somebody from RCS. Would you like to come up and? Well, I don't have to come up. I, I'm the master, so you know I can speak loud. But yeah, thank you, thank you, Justin, thank Court. You know, Carl and I work very close together. Work well together. Uh, it really you got one of the best guys in the state here as far as overseeing your operation. Doing a great job. I will say this, uh, and he's correct on this information. Mission, Mission Critical Partners, an excellent company, consultant. Uh, but then there's consulting and there's real work, okay? And what I mean by that, I don't disagree with anything Mission Critical is saying, but I will tell you this, that in our experience, and that's what I do for a living, uh, 30 years, we've been in the business for 63 years here in Kentucky. We have Texas, live here in Madison County and so forth, as well as family and so forth. But the bottom line is, it was 4.9 and 11 gig. Uh, the 11 gig is an excellent system, okay? And it is a licensed per se system, but so is the 4.9, and you can pick and park whatever you want to do. But the reason we went with the 4.9 as opposed to the 11 gig is because of the haul, okay? And we have the 4.9, uh, we work with uh, Governor's Office of Technology, Q's, uh, State Agencies, Department of Military Affairs, tremendous amount of local agencies with the 4.9. The reason we do is that Kentucky's terrain is not like Pennsylvania, okay, or not like Texas, or not like Kansas, all right? Kentucky's terrain, as we know, is very hilly. 4.9 propagates much better in the Kentucky terrain, okay? 
uh, 11, at the higher you go up in the frequency band, like 11 gigahertz, the higher you go up, the more line of sight you must have, okay? It's just like radios. I know uh, the chief or, you know, you guys are in 800 now. VHF, the oak, it propagates a little further out than 800. So, you know, the higher in frequency you go, the, the closer you have to be. So that's the only reason we, we uh, did 4.9. The only question I have, too, is that the contracts, uh, you know, the service contracts, ours is a total turnkey contract, it's probably why it's a little bit higher, meaning that we cover all trips, labor charge, so on and so forth. Uh, plus we guarantee 99.99% reliability on our pass. But anyway, that being said, just want to make sure that, you know, sometimes consultants, uh, my estate, they do a great job, but I don't always count. I, I don't get that wrong, but 11 gig and 4.9, just to make the key difference in Carl's right, one is that uh, the 11 gig beats more line of sight. The haul from Madison County to Esther County is a big haul, okay? That's a long haul, all right? Going through a few knobs, getting over there, okay? When you look at price, prices, price uh, you know, the price is right there. Price is always an issue. Then in this particular bid, the price is right there within $4 of each other. Then you look at it from a standpoint of reliability and performance. Uh, I know you guys have an 11 gig system here locally, correct? We have a combination, but yeah, yeah. it's part of one of our hops, yeah. Uh, so, you know, <clears> you know, a localized system like that, for example, like uh, if you were going to Madison County or Marion County or whatever county, that's, that's one thing. But when you start spreading that out, it gets to a little different situation, okay? But uh, I just appreciate your time. You know, I'm just saying that RCS, like I said, Carl knows has been here for a long time, been here, like I said, six, three years. We're not going anywhere. We've always stood behind what we've serviced and supported. Uh, we're a Kentucky company. Uh, so that's all i got to say. Kind of throwing my mercy at the court, I guess is what you said. Thank you. We appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Uh, really, and we've been in these situations before, and, you know, we kind of have to rely on the expertise of the individuals with Mission Critical and FEMA, Carl and his staff, and, uh, I don't know of one instance that that they've been wrong. <laughs> I have to I, I have to brag on them. They're excellent. We deal with real world situations. Like I said, we're not going to Might be one of the best in the country. Well, I don't brag on him too much. <laughs> Be careful. Don't brag on too okay. much. Okay. Anybody else have any discussion, anything to talk about? If not, we'll go back to Carl. And, Carl, I know you all spend a lot of time on this, and it looks like that you all have a recommendation, and that recommendation is? To go with AMK, <clears throat> try to get, you know, we got to do contract negotiation, just like we do with anybody. But, uh, you know, I'm going based on what I think I know and what I've looked at and what Fred and I've discussed and what Mission Critical. And like I said, we had two con calls with everyone involved, and then we had a bunch of little con calls with, like, me and one guy and Fred and one guy. Um, so, you know, but if we can't come to a contract negotiations, you know, then I say we go the other route because we know the other company and we're only talking $4 difference. So it's not like we're going to break the bank on, on this project with four bucks. Okay. So you got the warranty about one year versus three years, which is could be yeah, significant. Well, but we'll, we'll have to work through those things. But I'm not expecting any contract issues. But, I mean, you know, we've, like I said, we've worked with both companies. I trust both companies. I'll give <clears> both <throat> companies work on a regular basis because they're good companies. And they always come through, you know. <laughs> The, they always come back to the court. So on Carl's recommendation, then a motion be in order to accept uh, his recommendation, re recommendation of AMK at the present time, and it's all contingent upon contract negotiations, and then, Carl, you will come back to the court yes. with a definite. Yes. Larry, motion, I'll second it. So moved. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Barger. Mr. I just want to say that uh, I appreciate the gentleman's comments. Uh, I think he's heads up as far as that goes. I, we've already dealt with him. But uh, we're kind of in the dark here. Most of us are. And we've got to take 
uh, Carl's advice on on some of these things because we just don't know. But uh, I vote yes. Magistrate Hughes. Yes. Magistrate Combs. Yes. Judge Clark. Yes. And we do appreciate you coming in. Mm -hmm. All right. Next on the agenda is uh, there. This is a good one. Yeah. yeah. Open tower lighting bids. Carl, you want to take this one from sure. the bottom? Yeah. Uh, put together a, a spec. Um, sent it out to all the people that we thought would bid the job. Had a series of questions from potential bidders. And then the bids were due yesterday and no one bid it. So I have no bids to open. So I got to start over. So I'll be bidding it again because it's way too big a job to just give to somebody. So um, I don't know why they didn't bid it. I know I talked to one company yesterday and they just said they're too busy. They just got too much work and this, this was a big bid and you know, they'd be willing to do the job if we just wanted to give it to them, but uh, they, they just didn't have time to put all that paperwork together. So I said, well, we just don't have time to give you the job if you don't have time to put the paperwork together. So, so we'll start over. I'll get the team back together and We'll figure it out. I mean, we have tower lighting now. It's just they're, the failures are, are occurring more frequently than we would have ever expected. You know, they're August to be five years the lights have been on, and, you know, they run 24-7, and we're just having too many issues. And it's not like when you have a light bulb burn out at home and you just get the little step stool or get on the kitchen chair or the table and change it. You know, some of them are at 400 feet. So that takes a two-man team of special trained guys and equipment to climb up there and replace that $500 light bulb. Of course, they want about 800 bucks to climb up there and replace that $400, $500 light bulb. And some of the towers have six or eight of those light bulbs. So it's expensive. We're trying to get new, newer technology and uh, trying to get where we don't have to replace them so often, trying to look when CSEP ends, what's the most affordable for us. And so we were going with a new, the newest technology that FEMA said is working around the country based on surveys, you know, LED, LED stuff. LED lighting? LED stuff, because we don't have that now. LED five years ago was a baby for this. You know, no one had tested it. It's like, well, it could be worse than the old stuff. But now we know it's got a good track record, and, but no one wanted to bid it. You know, a lot of people want to sell us the lights, and you and I can go put it up, they said. But, you know, I've been on two of the towers, 400 foot and 330 foot. I don't think I'm going to go back up there again, you know, five years ago. So, so anyway, I'll rebid it. Uh, it's an embarrassment that we didn't get a single bid. But, you know, I can't force them to bid it. I guess some of them have more work than they know what to do with. Even one of the local companies I thought would bid it, and it, they didn't bid it. You know, we have one right here in Madison County, and they didn't bid. So I don't know what to tell, tell you guys. I'm embarrassed. Can't ever remember anything like this happening before. So, okay, we'll move on to the next the item on the agenda, and that's the award of the flooring bid for the Emergency Operations Center. You guys should have gotten that in your drop boxes as well. <clears throat> Hopefully, that worked and was right side up again. Uh, we had uh, three bids for the flooring. Uh, had two two bids for the carpeting. Uh, one was from Bennett's who bid the first time and then had a mess up in their bids and withdrew their bids. And then CDI flooring. Uh, Bennett's carpet bid was $32,500. Uh, CDI's flooring bid was $58,259 for the carpet. Only one company bid the tile. There's a lot of uh, tile in the building. Uh, and that was Martina Brothers. <coughs> and their bid was $76,740. We sent you the scoring sheets for all of those. Uh, the team this time was smaller. You know, last time we had a 10-man team evaluating the bids all face-to-face. -face. This time we only had a five-man team. Uh, we had myself and Michael Bryant from the county. We had the state's EOC project coordinator, Wayne Bird. And then we had uh, Tommy Thompson from Mission Critical. And then we had Matt Grayson and Matt Mills from uh, Codell, who are our construction managers. So that was, that was the team. And I'm sorry, that's six. I guess I can't count today. But six people reviewed them. And I sent you the scoring sheets. Bennett's won the carpet. Uh, when you look at 32.5 versus 58.259, and you look at the safety records, we use the same criteria we evaluated before. Uh, you wound up with Bennett scoring 94 for a final score and CDI at 62.2. Uh, that big a price difference is kind of hard to overcome. They were close on a lot of the other things, a point apart kind of thing. But when you miss the pricing by twenty thousand dollars on a you know thirty thousand dollar job uh, it's kind of hard to recoup, recoup so so we'd like to award the carpet part to Bennett's 
and start negotiating contract with them. And since we only had one bid for the tile, I'd like to give that guy the tile job. Uh, and that's Martina's, Martina Brothers at 76 740. And we have done references on all three of these companies. They all had good references. Uh, Martina is actually sounds like one of the best tile companies in this part of the state. Uh, they do all the all the big projects and all the projects get a lot of <coughs> eyes on them. So I'm pretty comfortable with get, you know giving them the tile job even though we only had one bid. But they seem to be the one of the best in in the in the Commonwealth. We probably are awarded for the withdrawal. Have to bid it again. <laughs> yeah, I hope not to have to bid flooring again, Larry. Do you want to do them together or separate, Jeff? We can do them together, being that we just had one bid on the tile. So most will be in order to uh, accept the recommendation of Carl and his staff with uh, Bennett Carpet at 32500 and uh, Martina at 76740 So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Cole? Yes. <coughs> yes. Sorry. And I think that's all you got to put up with me. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Carl. Okay, next we've got uh, second reading of three ordinance budget amendments. And uh, we went over these in depth at the last meeting, so I'll quickly go over these. The first one is uh, Ordinance 1402, and it's a budget amendment for the jail fund. And let's find that one. And this was for 42370 And uh, as Glenna talked about the last meeting, this is $17,000 a month we're getting each quarter that uh, local government told us not to budget last year, but uh, we're continuing to get the money. And uh, we called local government the other day, and they said, well, if you're getting the money, go on and budget it again. So we're, we've got it in the new budget, uh, the 17000 a quarter. but. Motion would be in order to approve the 42370 that uh, we've received in for the local corrections assistance. So move. <coughs> Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, next one is the road fund. And uh, as we always talk, the truck license distribution was over $9,952. <coughs> And it seems like that goes over every year. And that's a number that's given to us by local government. Also, municipal road aid was 19478 And then road reimbursements was $275,086 for a total uh, going to reserve for transfer of $304,536. So moved. Second. Master King. Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. And the third one was uh, second reading budget at 1404. And that's the general fund, and that was the final uh, reimbursement feds and the state of 521000 from the ice storm that uh, we finally were able to get uh, from FEMA out of Frankfurt. So a uh, motion would be in order to approve that as submitted at 521000 Four hundred thirteen dollars. So we'll move. Second. How long ago was that? A year or two? Nine. 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 Yeah. Five years ago. <laughs> yes. Master Barger. Yes. Master Hughes. Yes. Master Cole. Yes. Master Clark. Yes. Uh, used to get several of these and uh, haven't seen one in a while, but uh, this is from Madison County Conservation District. And uh, to whom it may concern, I've enclosed a petition for an agricultural district in Madison County. Please review the enclosure and notify our office in writing on or before April 30th of any problems or concerns. And this is from uh, Ray Markham, who is the chair of the County Conservation District. And uh, really what this is is petitioning the fiscal court to establish an agricultural district. And uh, at the present time, we have uh, let's see. We've got, uh, I go over to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We've got 17 current agricultural districts that have been set up through fiscal court. And this one is from uh, Mr. John Lackey and his family. Uh, and it looks like uh, half, uh, 224 acres, 224 <coughs> and 570. 
uh, the required acreage on this request is 500 acres. So they more than go over that, they go over 1,000 acres. And uh, this pretty much says that the land will remain in agriculture. Um, this is the first one we've seen in a while, but John and his family have decided to uh, put this in an agricultural district and have asked the fiscal court to accept it as that. You know, I know in some of the western Kentucky counties, there's a lot more, a lot more land that's put in ag districts, and we really haven't done it a lot here in Madison County. But it, uh, there are some benefits and not many drawbacks to it, and uh, it's a good thing. So I'll, I'll make a motion we approve this. Judge, I really don't know whether or not it requires the consent of the court. You're right. Whether it just requires them to notify the court of their plans. It certainly wouldn't hurt anything to express your desire to accept it yeah. but I think it's a lot like the, the, some of the special districts that have to report that you can't accept or reject it I think this is the same type of theory but it certainly wouldn't hurt anything to okay. express your support for it yeah. and if that's what you're doing that's still yeah. Sorry. and we've also that also puts it in the minutes too huh? I'll second Master King yes Master Barger yes Master Hughes yes. Master Combs yes Judge Clark yes uh, judges report Real quick, uh, Trust for Life, that's the Richmond and Bridge Chamber of Commerce and the Circuit Clerk, Friday, 12 to 1 at the Extension Office, this Friday, the 25th. I uh, hope to get a good crowd out there for that. Uh, Sarah Care is Friday, April 25th at Union Church, the Spaghetti Dinner. They always have a live auction. They have a whole lot of things going on down there. They've always got top-notch entertainment. And uh, I don't know why, but they couldn't get in today, but still wanted to announce that that will be down at Union Church on Friday night. And they invite everybody to come out to that. Uh, the Madison County Airport Open House is Saturday, April 26th from 10 to 3. And uh, this is always a, a big deal. I think this is the third annual. Had a great crowd out there last year, and things are really happening at the airport. Uh, we're getting some funding through the state, and board's really working hard and we're working with the the faa and the feds and good things look very good everything looks very good for the future of our madison county airport so they wanted me to invite everybody to come out to that and then the kentucky transportation cabinet will hold an informal meeting tuesday may 13th from five to seven at the new kirksville school for Im for the improvements of the connector road from wallace mill to i-75 at duncannon uh, this is really a comment section. No definite route has been picked on that. They're still looking at alternatives. But special project money has been appropriated for right-of-way and utilities. And uh, looking at the amount that's been uh, allocated, I think there's enough for construction too. I don't think we'll see that happen until the reconstruction gets to uh, Weddell's Mill. But uh, they want to go on and get public comments on it, get a, a, a route picked out so they can go on and start working on right of way and, uh, and uh, utilities. So when it does get there, they'll be able to go with it. So that's gonna be interesting. Uh, be great for those individuals in Garrett County and beyond getting to I-75. So uh, that's all I had in the judge's report. And I would uh, uh, like to ask the court's permission to go into a short executive session dealing with personnel, please. Hello. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. <coughs> Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Uh, and I promise you we won't be long. Start with uh, livestock removal request. As of Friday, the 18th last week, we have removed 709 animals from Madison County. Uh, that's approximately 227 more than we did at the same time span during during uh, 2013. Uh, January 1st? Yeah, as of January 1st, Master Hughes. Uh, it's been busy, starting to level off, and uh, with the warmer weather, everything was starting to look better than that. Uh, Lona trucks, as of today, were booked through July 4th weekend. Uh, if anybody wants to schedule the Lona truck, it's great to clean out the, the garage or the basement of any junk that you might need to get rid of. Uh, road cleanup. As of today, we have removed 1,450 bags of litter off the Madison County highways, and we're about 75% complete with the spring cleanup on the roads. So, 
And one more friendly reminder, on Saturday, June 21st, Kentucky River Sweep down at Fort Spoonsboro Beach uh, from 9 until noon. Followed with at noon, we'll have a cookout, clean up. We'll be cleaning up around the Fort Boonesboro Beach and across from Fort, Bur Fort Boonesboro in Clark County there. This is an actual, a natural collection point for litter and trash that comes down the river. And uh, it'll be a fun-filled day followed with a cookout. So everyone's invited. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Any questions? If not, I want to mention, Judge, uh, absentee voting is open. Walk-in absentee is open till the uh, 19th of May, and the deadline to request about a write-in absentee ballot is 17th of May, but please don't wait that long. That makes it tight getting the ballot out and getting it back. But uh, if you have uh, going to be out of the county, you can on the election day, you can vote uh, walk-in absentee. If you have uh, mobility issues or few other reasons you can vote right in absentee all that information is on our website yeah okay. thanks Kenny sure. uh, any other department heads Leroy Carl's already done Doug anybody all right okay we're going into comments from magistrates uh, Greg just enjoying this beautiful weather and everything's running pretty much smooth and good and appreciate all of our departments for the work they do thanks very much Roger it sounds like the state spent all their money on salt on <laughs> TV. A lot of us spent a lot of money on salt. Got to recover from it, I guess. Uh, the only thing big is the uh, Butcher Family Flower Sale. It's this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Uh, we're opening up 8 to 8 on Saturday, where we generally didn't open until 12 on, I mean on Friday. 8 to 8 on Friday, generally open at 12, but uh, such a demand and everybody wanting to get in there early, we're just going to open it up for two full days. Uh, trees, shrubs, garden plants, as well as the flowers. Uh, every penny of the money goes to the American Cancer Society. Uh, we, we try not to even buy any food with any of the money. We try to furnish our own food and pay for it out of our pocket. Even the gas to haul the flowers and stuff, we, we furnish all that. So we want every dime of it to, we, don't, we, want, you, we want you to know that when you buy 10 or or $100 worth, it's all going for the cause. And uh, that's, what we, that's what we've always strived for. I may be wrong, I think this is the 15th year. But uh, this flare sale started on my muffler shop lot 15 years ago. And we was absolutely covered up that day. We, we figured out that day on Saturday that it's not going to work unless we get a bigger place and it's got bigger every year. So uh, we appreciate anybody that comes out and buys something. And it's for a, definitely for a good cause. Only other thing is uh, we are in the process of getting a boat built and a new paddle boat for the ferry. It's just it's in the beginning stages right now. I already had our first change order. The engines are not even available anymore because of <laughs> restrictions that they've put on them. But the good part of it is we, the, the guys found two engines, same brand and everything, a little less horsepower, which was no problem for us, and saved us $5,000. So this is one of them change orders that went the other way. They don't usually happen that way, though. But, uh, we're glad to hear that. That's all I got. Thanks. Bill Ray? Uh, Union City Rotan's having one of their big fish fries this Saturday, I'd say the politicians be thicker than fleas, <laughs> but it, a good time should be had by all. <laughs> At all? That's it. Larry? Would you get any apples to give out? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Rod, where is the... Uh, uh, butcher family. What are you having that this year? Oh, I'm sorry. It's at the fairgrounds. Okay. Uh, I, I, didn't fairgrounds. I, I thought that's where it was, but I didn't know it. It's been there for the last few years. I apologize. Judge, I only had really one thing, and, and I guess it's frustration is what you would say, and I've talked to Kenny about this, but, you know, when they redistrict uh, our representatives, you know, they just draw lines, you know, here, there, and everywhere. Well, you know, you go down on Short Line Pike, uh, uh, a young man, his wife uh, voted for 40 years, has 150 or 200 houses on that whole uh, short line pike. And this guy lives at the end, main end, no other houses. And they took him out and put him all the way on the other side of the bridge. And, and you know, to vote, he's voted for 40 Jack Alcorn. I don't care to tell who it is. And now he's got to go on the other end of town, actually pass two places before he does vote. I think that's a disgrace. You know, all they had to do, and, Ken, and Kenny's looked at it, and I've looked at it, and it's honest in what they've done, don't get me wrong, but all they had to do was move the line two foot one way. And they, everybody in that whole neck of the woods would all be voting the same place like they always have. It's, it's a tough deal, and Kenny and them do a great job. Oh, I'm not, oh, I'm not I blaming I mean, I'm Kenny. telling you, the way they've 
switch things up and change these these boundary lines and stuff and of course now we've got five state representatives representing Madison County and one of them live in the county yeah and that's what happened in this case it's a it's between the, I think it's the 89th and the 81st don't quote me on next they changed the numbers around too between Marie Rader and, and Rita uh, and Rita and he's in Rita dist Rita's district and Marie comes up and makes a notch there for some reason and there there's one house on the other road it's not not in the precinct it was before when we made changes to our precinct boundaries that we had control of, we tried, we if we didn't split subdivisions, we didn't, you know, if you communities, we tried to keep together, even small communities like subdivisions. So there wasn't any confusion for, for the voters. But when they passed those rep lines down, now they're all done electronically. So there's no, before you used to get a big stack of sheets of paper and somebody had drawn on with an ink pen when you could kind of, couldn't tell where the line was. Well, now it's, you know, dead right there on the, on the, on the screen oh, about where does. the line falls. I mean, they've got the line drawn straight. Looks like it goes right in the middle of his house because I guess if he slept on this side of the house, he could still vote. <laughs> and she may sleep on this side. So I, I'm not going to get into that. But I just wanted to say I, I, I don't think that, of course, you know, I, and they've got a tough job doing to understand that. But when you get down there, you know, you need to look at everything. Yep. You know, there's one little house probably out of, uh, how many, Ronnie? 200? Yeah, 200 houses, and now he's got to go somewhere else. But I, that's other than that, that's just a little frustration on him. Yeah, he says he's not going to and couldn't blame him if he didn't. No, well, he, w he will go vote because he wants to vote against whoever done that. I don't blame him. I would, too. <laughs> but other than that, I am so tickled to be here, Judge. <laughs> I'm going to get the blame for it anyway. But I'm just glad to be here, Judge. Glad you're here. Kenny, what about election markers you got? Everybody, I believe we're going to be in good shape with the reduction of the number of precincts. Uh, this will be our first. We'll want to do this since I got here, and redistricting's held us up. So we finally got uh, got the opportunity. We've reduced from ten precincts. We'll be able to save some money and have plenty of election officers. Thirtieth uh, and the first are first two schools. So good we'll deal. Then. All right. Uh, any comments from the audience? Anybody? Mr. Terrell. One of Dwayne Curry's guys come out to my place. He thought I owned that old Campbell house, which I don't own. I tried to buy it once, but I had to give it back. I haven't heard the status. The reason I was worried about it is there's one down the road, about a mile down the road. The neighbors have been complaining about it for years. That nothing's been done with it. Well, and, and I meant to call you. I talked to Dwayne about that, and he had had a complaint from Berea Tourism because of the fair and it is kind of an eye so I fully agree with them. I mean, I. It is, and, and we'll be glad when they can get the lien straight and you can buy it. Thank you. I appreciate it. I guarantee it. it'll be cleaned right. up. <laughs> and I got the second question. Being on Bria City Council, there's rumors going around Bria that one of one of our FAR guys is running for Maastricht, that if he wins, we're going to lose the funding for the Bria Fire Department from the county. Is that true? No. Okay. But I, I hope you put it in the newspaper because... A lot of people is telling different. We don't really have time to talk about all the rumors because they're flying. Oh, I tell me about it. <laughs> I understand that too. Thanks, Judge. Uh, it's it's funded right here in the budget. Yeah, it's uh, funded. We won't let that happen. No, we've got the five mile agreement with Bria and then also Ronnie. It they're it's tremendous help to South, Southern Madison County. Sure. That agreement, we wouldn't let anything jeopardize that. Okay. All right. Anybody else from the audience? Judge, you've got some Eastern students here. You may want to I know some okay. young people there. Would you all like to stand up, come up here and introduce yourself, tell us what you're doing? <laughs> huh? He's, he's courteous enough to stay. I mean. They're probably comfortable staying back there, but you all are here for a class today, right? We wanted to acknowledge you. Welcome. Glad you have some interest in what it is that we're doing here. Was it a pretty good show? <laughs> I'd pick your feet up on the way out so you don't trip. <laughs> Thank you all for coming in. Though. We really like to see people get involved. Uh, next court date, hopefully May 13th <laughs> on Tuesday. In in and Berea. it will be in Berea. 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 And uh, motion to pay, pay the claims and approve the transfer. So moved. Second. Master King? Yes. Master Barger? Yes. Master Hughes? Yes. Master Combs? Yes. Judge Clark? Yes. Motion adjourned. So moved. You can go.